Okay, welcome back to the Top Down Charts YouTube channel. This is Callum Thomas, Head of Research and Founder of Top Down Charts. We're going to be looking today at the weekly macro themes report. This is basically our core report, part of the institutional service. And the purpose of this report is that every Friday I go through and look at a couple of, you know, sort of macro insights, um, risk aspects, investment ideas, kind of a good mix of topics, basically aimed at multi-asset investors, so people that, you know, tend to also look at things from a top-down point of view, or operate from a top-down point of view in terms of their portfolios, and, you know, are quite sort of flexible in the approach. So we'll be looking today at topics three and four. Um, topics one and two are actually really very relevant to these ones, because, you know, you can see talking about the growth pulse and talking about the risks here in the USDCNY and how they can spill over to emerging market currencies. But we're going to be focusing first on this chart, so this emerging markets country brief. This is the proportion of the countries in the MSCI Emerging Markets Index, which are trading above or below their 50-day moving average. As you can see there, that has absolutely collapsed. There's a couple of ways that you can look at breadth indicators like this. One is kind of like as an oscillator. So when it's very high, that can tell you that markets are overbought. And when it's very low, it can tell you that markets are oversold. The exceptions to those kind of um, situations are, you know, when it's coming out of a correction, the oversold may not necessarily, I mean, overbought kind of indication cannot, um, sometimes not work as you expect. But anyway, I just want to show you also the updated version of that. You can see that it's actually starting to turn up. To me, that raises the odds that we do see a short-term bottom. Um, the other thing that raises those odds is that we've seen sentiment come back a bit. So back in um, late last year, I was talking, you know, quite bullish about emerging markets at that stage, and, and this was a key reason why. Pretty high conviction, actually, and I'll, I'll go into the valuation picture in a minute, which is, um, you know, another key reason for that. But since then, we've gone back to neutral and then back down again, um, and I would say that that's like a low conviction, bullish contrarian signal. You know, ideally, you you want to see this indicator getting lower and lower. Um, usually though, <laughs> the trouble with that is that when you start talking about emerging markets from the bullish side of things and this indicator is that low, people will start to wheel off a whole bunch of reasons why you shouldn't be in there and and that's pretty typical. Um, you know, this is basically a crowd psychology kind of indicator. It um, combines a whole bunch of different things. But anyway, the what I was going to mention here is you can see in 2016, so we got the same kind of thing. Well, not exactly the same, but we did get quite washed out on the sentiment indicator there. Came back up and then pulled back down again. You know, a little short-term bottom there. I think that's kind of an interesting potential analog. Um, remains to be seen, of course. There's a few other things going on, but that could be, you know, quite an interesting, um, you know, sort of, sort of, game plan for what we're, what we're going, what's going on here. Uh, the other chart that I wanted to show you um, on also just in passing, that's what it's looking like now, hasn't really moved that much, but you know, definitely keeping an eye on that. The other one I wanted to show you is the risk sentiment indicator. So again, this is um, combining a bunch of different signals or a bunch of different indicators to heighten the signal, lower the noise. And this one here is actually focused more on the risk side of things, so risk pricing. So we're talking things like CDS, credit spreads, and um, you know, volat uh, implied volatility. And as you can see there, it got to quite complacent levels and um, has started to pick up a bit. Um, one thing that I think is gonna help emerging markets at the moment is the fact that the growth pulse has actually started to turn. So you can see the composite leading indicator there in the grey has turned up. And you know these two lines are quite intertwined for very good reason. You know, part of it is the financial conditions aspect. And you know 
more complacent or more constructive risk pricing tends to be more supportive for the growth aspect, but also, you know, better growth tends to dampen um, flare ups in risk pricing because obviously the background story, the fundamental story kind of helps um, to look through some of that noise. But really the key chart probably um, is this one here. And especially the blue line, which is the DXY US dollar index, and I'm showing it here year on year change inverted. Key point there, when the dollar gets stronger, it tends to be bad for emerging market equities. Now some people will probably point out that that black line is emerging markets in USD terms, and obviously you know, there's going to be a direct impact on the um, you know, performance there because of just because of currency translation effects. But basically I can guarantee you that if we looked at this chart um, in local currency terms, we'd see pretty similar thing where, um, you know, basically a strong dollar is a headwind for emerging markets. There's a few different reasons here. I'm not going to go into it. But the key point is that US dollar index has started to, you know, it's made a few attempts at breaking out. I'm still leaning bearish on the US dollar, but the thing is, if it breaks out, then it's probably going to keep going. And if it does that, then that's going to be bearish for emerging markets. <laughs> you know, if US dollar index breaks out, then that sentiment picture is going to get much better, shall we say. Um, so that's probably the key risk to be watching for. Um, China PPI, I expect that to pick up quite a bit because, you know, the domestic picture in China is actually looking quite improved. Um, property prices accelerating again. Um, most likely going to see more stimulus in China and that's going to um, ultimately end up in, you know, a, a tailwind for commodities. So, you know, that's probably the, the positive side of the trade war story. I mean, the trade war, you know, is definitely impacting on sentiment, as we can see there. And, you know, sometimes from a bullish contrarian standpoint, that's a good thing. Speaking of contrarian kind of signals, let's look at valuations. So I always like to look at valuations. I try to, um, you know, have the valuation indicator for just about every asset that we look at. And my process is you start with valuation and then you bring in the monetary policy picture, the liquidity situation, and then you look at things like cycle. So whether it's the supply cycle, the economic cycle, the earning cycle. And then of course, you run it out with things like sentiment and technicals. And, but you know, valuation should be a pretty strong anchor, especially if you're operating on a medium to longer term tends to work better over a longer term. And as you can see here, the valuation picture has improved slightly with the sell-off. Not quite back to the, um, you know, much lower point that it was back in the end of 2018. You know, and, and, and when it gets to those kind of levels, it's, um, it's kind of a, you know, probably not too far-fetched to say that you can just close your eyes and buy. Um, but of course, you know, you might need to actually close your eyes and just wait because sometimes when it gets cheap, it can get cheaper. And uh, the other one I'll show you is these two. So these are just providing a different view on valuations here. You can see the black line is the median across, median composite valuation indicator across countries. And um, yeah, that's gone back to quite cheap levels there. On the sector view, yeah, it's back to the cheap side as well. I did look at the countries here, but we won't go into detail there. The point is that the valuation picture has improved, um, and you know when valuation and, and sentiment improves, that tends to do a lot of heavy lifting for the for the um, the bullish case there. And then really, you're just waiting to make sure that this um, the macro drivers don't. Uh, you know, make things too difficult, and there is a risk that they make things difficult. On the technicals, though, we, as I as I noted over on that brief picture, that's turned up, and you know, um, looking at the 200-day moving average breadth, I mean, you probably would rather see that indicator also collapse. 
but you know if it can hold on to the strength there then that is actually also a bit of a sign of strength but anyway this one's my key focus and um, you know if we do see that turning up gaining a bit more strength there then that's probably going to be the writing on the walls for the short short term outlook for emerging markets so i'll leave it there if you've got any comments or questions then definitely either put them in the comment section below or get in touch and uh, be happy to have a chat